Today we're going to be having a look at the AQA required practical for biology which is on photosynthesis. For this practical we're going to be investigating how pondweed is affected by the distance away that a light bulb is. For the pondweed it's quite easy to um, measure the rate of photosynthesis happening because you can see the number of bubbles that are coming off the leaves. In this boiling tube I have already cut myself about a 10 centimetre length of the pondweed and I have put it upside down. You should already know that leaves have holes in their undersides which is where the gases come out of. So if I put the pondweed upside down the gases are going to come upwards and it's going to be easier for me to count the number of bubbles that I have. I've put some distilled water in here and I've also put some of this, some of my sodium bicarbonate. The purpose of the sodium bicarbonate is to provide carbon dioxide. We don't want one of the limiting factors for this reaction to be carbon dioxide. We want the only one that's limiting the reaction to be the amount of light. So I've put sodium bicarbonate in just so the plant's got enough CO2. That's not going to be an issue for it. So I've got my um, pondweed in my boiling tube. I'm using this kind of a test tube rack just because it doesn't stop any of the light going onto my boiling tube. Be careful when you're doing it. You do not want something in the way of the light here because then what's the point? There is no distance difference. I've also got my lamp here and I've got my 50 centimetre ruler. You can use 30 centimetre, you can use metre ruler, doesn't really matter. I use this to measure the dis distance from the light bulb inside the lamp to the um, pondweed in its boiling tube. I've also got myself a stopwatch. Once you've let the pondweed acclimatise for about a minute or so in the boiling tube, you're ready to start the experiment. Switch on your lamp, note the distance away, and all you have to do is stare at this little boiling tube for one minute and count the number of bubbles that come off. The further the way you are, the fewer bubbles you will have. The closer you are, the more bubbles you will have. In general, when you're this sort of distance away, you might see 10 or so. I've had pupils, when it's 10 centimetres or 0 centimetres away, having hundreds of bubbles to count. So we count all of our bubbles and then we can draw the graph. If you are in a lower set or you're doing the foundation paper, you might want to just do distance from lamp against the number of bubbles. If, however, you're a higher ability student, you should be working out the um, intensity of the light. So light intensity you can measure, it's one divided by the distance squared. So distance squared and then one divided by that. One divided by distance squared. And you can then do that number against your number of bubbles per minute. Some of the problems with this experiment, which you might be asked about in the exam, are mainly that you can't tell what gas bubbles are made of. We're saying that the bubbles are made of oxygen, so probably that's going to tell us how much photosynthesis is going on, but they could be made of other things as well. Another problem is that some of the bubbles will be different sizes. You might have 10 really big bubbles over here and 100 tiny little bubbles over here. So an improvement to this would be to use something like a um, gas syringe instead to actually collect the volume of the gas. But that's it for this practical. We just put some pondweed a certain distance away from the lamp, count the number of bubbles, draw a graph. That's pretty much it. Thank you very much for listening.